I don't care about like any of that stuff, but to have a deep conversation about this, where we can go off on tangents about psychology, philosophy, revenue operations. We like those small conversations, those one-on-one -on -one talks with very, very deep subject matter. Right. Mm -hmm. So that makes sales one of the best places for us. Red, thanks so much for joining me on the How to Pivot podcast. I am so happy to have you on. Welcome. Absolutely. This is going to be a blast. I'm super excited about it. Um, just because there, I've seen so many people who are ready to start making changes, but don't really understand how to yet. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Yes. And that's why I had you on the podcast. And I saw you and I thought right away, okay, I think you can bring such great value and we're going to have a great conversation. So yes. to start us off, and this is so great as we were just chatting before I hit record, you and I don't know each other that well. And I thought this is so perfect because I can ask you all the questions that I'm thinking about that we haven't, you know, you know, talked about what we're going to really say on this podcast. And it's just going to be such a good way to get to know each other too. Well, and that's the thing is I want it to feel as I like if people are watching this as a video, you'll be able to yeah. see the hamster running around in the wheel in my head. <laughs> um, like that's I want it to feel as real as possible. Yeah, and that's what we're all about. So maybe give the audience a little bit and for me a little bit of background. You are referred to as the unsales guy and you're a sales coach and you just launched a new course for sales for introverts. So build upon that and let us know who you are and more about what made you so passionate about sales and introverts. So like most best stories, most of what happened happened because of a rock bottom in my mind. I've been doing sales for about 15 years and I've always been good at it. Um, usually like top 25, 30% at every job that I've been at. But the problem was I was working twice as hard. I was working 70, 80 hours where everybody else was working 40, maybe 50. So yes, I was getting better results, but my efficiency was lower than everybody else. That's not something that you can do indefinitely. So around age 28 or so, I hit my breaking point. I was selling a product that while it was a great product, I didn't really believe in it. I know if you're listening to this, you can't see me. I'm about 300 pounds. I look like a rejected Game of Thrones character. <laughs> no. I'm not a small man. I have knocked door to door in some of the worst neighborhoods in the Northeast. I am not afraid of people, but I was selling security systems. So it was against what I was afraid of. It, it was me trying to fear monger to people in their living rooms, which wasn't me. It was me fighting against all of everything I know, every experience that I knew. I knew people were inherently good because I have knocked on doors and I've spoken to people everywhere. But selling security systems led to this breakdown. From there, I had that eureka moment. And the, the best parallel that I've come up with is, you know, when you're like 13, 14 years old and you realize that your parents are human beings, and they don't know everything, and they may have gaps in their knowledge the same way everybody else does. I had that realization about my manager, that even though they wanted what was best for me, they were teaching me everything that they knew, they, they were trying to help, they didn't know what really worked. They, they were repeating things that they were told, but may not have actually been the right thing. It started when I read a book called Spin Selling by Neil Rackham. And in like the very first chapter, Neil Rackham takes apart like all of the most commonly held things about sales. Like you need to be great at overturning objections. Well, we've listened to a few thousand of your phone calls and overturning objections has no correlation with closing rate. Oh, well, you have to be great at closing. Well, closing has no correlation with closing rate. <laughs> so from there, I realized that all these things that I've been taught, all these high pressure sales strategies were wrong. And so I started to rebuild sales from the ground up, um, started reading like 40, 50 books a year and really yeah, just rebuilt your, it all from scratch. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like I, I, I'm listening to your first podcast. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm reading at least two books at a time and, and I, I audio books. I'm cheating. I know, but everybody that's, like that still counts. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it still feels like cheating. But wait, I want to go back. Okay. So this breakdown that you had yes. now, and, and I, I can totally relate because there's times in my business where I'm like, okay, like something's got to change, right? Like this is mm -hmm. just, I'm at my breaking point. Did you quit? Like, were you out on the street and you just decided like, I am done with this. So type it of was a full like, blown. Happened? Yeah. It was a full blown <laughs> panic attack in a factory parking lot. Oh gosh. Okay. There is a line. I'm huge into comedy. There's a line um, by a comedian, uh, Tommy Jonigan. Uh, he was talking about a breakup. He said, I didn't cry like a baby. I cried like a grown man because babies don't have the lung capacity to cry the way I did. Yeah. <laughs> like so that was like, it was a full blown, like ugly cry. Not like yeah. I was broken, but there's a beautiful thing about rock bottom. And, and for those of your listeners looking to pivot, <laughs> you get to choose where rock bottom is. You get to draw that line in the sand and say no moss whenever you want to. I could run out of coffee tomorrow morning and decide I'm never going to let that happen again. And six months from now own a chain of Dunkin' Donuts franchises. Mm -hmm. Like you get to decide, like it's all about perception. So for me, as vulnerable as I was at that point, as broken and battered as I was, it's still one of the most powerful moments of my life because it forced that change. It forced me to start reading and reanalyzing and not just walking in like the, that sales um, job, the one for security systems. They literally handed me a PowerPoint presentation of like 30 slides that were printed out and they expected me to sit at a dining room table and go slide by slide. Mm -hmm. It didn't work yeah, because it wasn't customer focused. Right. But but that's so, what I was being told because that yeah. was their best guess. So did you quit that day yes. or like what that was your pretty first soon thing you after. Did? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon after. I, I was still fighting it. I'm I'm German Irish, so I have a bit of a stubborn streak. Um so I, I fought it for a little bit longer and then found myself into a different job that it was B2B sales. But it, that still had its own issues in terms of old school thinking that didn't really work. Right. So at that point, you said, all right, I'm going to start reading books. I'm going to mm -hmm. create my own set of what I think is, you know, success in sales. Yes. Right. And, and rebuilt it all like and, and not just using sales, using neurology, using fiction, using whatever I could come across to explain things the right way. I've explained how to talk to gatekeepers using the mm -hmm. Spanish Civil War. Oh, wow. I have explained disc personality profiles using Ninja Turtle. I've explained B2B personality archetypes within different job descriptions using Harry Potter characters. But the idea so is to be relatable to, to whoever like, your audience is. Yeah, it, the idea is not just to make it relatable, but to make it where they can draw the parallels where they can understand it. They can see the gears going the same way I do. Mm -hmm. Like what I want them to do is to be able to rebuild the car, not just change the oil. Got it. Yeah. Like why is the oil important as opposed to just, okay, loosen this 15 millimeter bolt. So what did you, you know, after you read all the books and everything, what, what made you come up with, your idea to be like the unsales guy and like what was that next step like what what did you do from there it, it was me kind of fighting against a lot of the traditions of sales um mm -hmm. and fighting against a lot of the neuro linguistic programming the closing statements like all the jordan belfort grant cardone bs out there you know that always be closing glen gary glen ross trash like that's right. what i wanted to fight against and that's what people think about when they think of sales they think of i'm thinking of like john candy in planes trains and automobiles or like danny devito and matilda like that's what people think of when it comes to sales right that's not who i am i'm not showing up 
in a navy blue suit with a white shirt and a red tie with cufflinks on and okay let's talk about things yeah do i have a deal for you no i'm showing up looking like a homeless man who got his act together a little bit Uh (laughs) And, and i'm talking about things like emotional intelligence when was emotional intelligence ever talked about in revenue operations? That's true. So how did, um, you know, because you mentioned, you know, being an introvert and some of the sales processes and techniques that you've come up with, it's geared towards that. So do you consider yourself an introvert? Full-blown hide in the basement introvert, yeah. like full nerd. <laughs> like if, if, so sometimes I record in here, this is like the little studio that um, I have. In the other room where I usually work, I have like links, like high, like the Legend of Zelda shield, the sword. Like I have a lightsaber right here. Like I am a full blown Star Wars sci fi history nerd. Like I dived through everything. I spent a lot of years being that shy, awkward kid to the point where I had to learn how to make small talk from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, literally, I have acronyms that I still teach people to this day who, if they feel uncomfortable with small talk. I love that. Yeah. So what made you decide, okay, I'm going to, you know, do something to help introverts as far as sales? Like, how did that all come about? It's kind of twofold. It's one is that I saw all the problems in sales. Scripts, people just regurgitating their scripts on customers when they get them on the phone and just cannon firing them out of their mouths before they get hung up on um the idea of you know hey make make 100 phone calls set one appointment that's a success like it's these things that can be very toxic for introverts and seeing them kind of build likewise when i was doing research into introverts one of my favorite books of all time is quiet by susan kane After reading that and understanding my own introversion better, that completely, like, it filled in a spot that I didn't know I was missing a gear. I'll like, have to explained... read that. I've never heard of that one. Oh, it, it's one of, <sighs> she's written two books right now. I will safely say that Quiet changed my life for the better. Um, and Bittersweet is the first book I read that made me feel somewhat understood. Awesome. I'll put those in the show notes too for people. Yeah, no, those were absolutely phenomenal books. Um, if you are an introvert at all, you should be reading Quiet. Awesome. Yeah, because I think a lot of introverts, and I know I'm I'm an introvert, and I have always tried to over not overcompensate, but I wanted to do things that would challenge me and get me out of the box. Which is, I mean, yeah. even the podcast in general, like you and I being, you know podcast host it's not it doesn't come naturally for me i have to mm-hmm. put a lot a lot of time and effort into it more so than probably other people but it makes me but, feel better once i do it <laughs> but but it's not like introverts are total social outcasts either right like right. we still need like you could go back to i believe it was piaget and his study like with monkey like rhesus monkeys and needing connection and cuddling up with like a fake stuffed monkey to get connection. Everybody needs to be social. It's part of our the way we're wired. It's how we do it. Mm-hmm. The extroverts are okay with having a hundred shallow small talk conversations. As introverts, we aren't. I don't care what the weather is where you are. I just don't. <laughs> <It's hot. laughs> and I don't mean that in the, a mean way, but as long no. as you're safe and given that the internet is running there, I assume that there's right. nothing deadly outside. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. But I don't care about like any of that stuff. But to have a deep conversation about this where we can go off on tangents about psychology, philosophy, revenue operations. We like those small conversations, those one on one talks with very, very deep subject matter. Right. Mm -hmm. So that makes sales one of the best places for us. Exactly. But we've treated it and we've built it around this numbers game. Hey, you make 200 phone calls, you make one appointment. Introverts can't do that. So we have Mm -hmm. to rebuild things in a way, change the systems that we're currently using 
so that we're maximizing the social battery that we do have. Right. Yeah. And I was, um, I just saw an article recently. So with introverts, I think, you know, a lot of times they shy away from sales in general. So I wanted this conversation to be one of, you know, if people are looking for a change and maybe they're thinking about something, they want to open up their horizons a bit and think about professions that they might have not looked into before, I think they should reconsider sales. 100%. Why do you think someone who is introverted, like, why do you think they would be at an advantage in sales that they might not have thought about before? Let me start by saying not all sales is created equal. So as much as I fight against, again, the Grant Cardone, the um, Jordan Belfort's, the Dale Carnegie's, the Ogmandinos of the world, they do have their place and they are effective in the right situation. If you're going into Best Buy to buy a TV, those are the kinds of salespeople who perform the best. But in a B2B environment, something that's much more relationship focused, something that's not a one call close, that's when introverts do very, very well because we have to dig deep into those problems. That well digging that I just talked about is an advantage in a complex B2B deal, whereas if it's just what's the price of this TV? Walmart has it cheaper. It's not. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of switching, you need to find out what your strengths are, how you recharge, what your comfort zone is, and find something that matches as much of your comfort zone as possible. I'm a big believer in the hero's journey. And talking about that in regards to marketing in terms of like corporations, business training, One of the great things with the hero's journey is that the protagonist has to leave their comfort zone, but they do have Mm -hmm. to come back because to stay in that wilderness at all times is too deadly. Right. And I think especially for introverts, they need that time to gather themselves, have a a couple minutes of private time or quiet time and not being in a, you know, so even like loud environments, like having a remote opportunity. Right. Exactly. So, you know, choosing environments are important. Yeah. And and understanding where you have to be to operate at your best. Um, Mm -hmm. I did not do well in an open office environment. I did well, but not great, I should say. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because I thrive on that deep thought, that long, concentrated, let's dive to the bottom of this and figure out every single possibility. Mm -hmm. Having somebody like have their phone ring on the other side of the room, that took me out of my thought every single time. Or even somebody stands up and goes to the bathroom. Everybody's head pops up like prairie dogs. (laughs) Right, right. So knowing, yeah, knowing the work environment that you excel mm -hmm. in and then finding an opportunity, whether they are, you know, looking to get into sales, just setting yourself up for success based on what you know about yourself and your your work habits. Yeah. Like like getting out of your comfort zone, there's a romanticism to that. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason we aren't all sitting down for our work every day on a bed of nails. Right. (laughs) <laughs> like you need some level of comfort for it to be sustainable. Absolutely. One of the things I heard you talk about is just, you know, I think believing in your product. So when you're working at the security place, one of the reasons why it wasn't a good fit is you didn't believe in the product. So would you say like, how important is that, especially for introverts when they're looking for a sales position or really anyone, you know, how important is it to Ugh. to really have that passion for what you're you're selling is it the most important thing in the world no like there are plenty of people who do very well selling windows or whatever for a lot of years i said the widget doesn't matter but the process has to matter the way you treat people has to matter for me to be a fear monger every day didn't match my personality Mm -hmm. because that's really what selling security systems is is somebody's going to break into your house murder your family and eat all the cookies or whatever you want people to be afraid of at that point. I couldn't do that. I'm not a fearful person and it's not something that I want to put into other people. So Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the product. It was the pitch that was the problem for me. Right. 
Right. And that probably came from your leadership. So you didn't have control over it because it could be, you know, one, it could be the sky is falling, but it could be that you're selling safety, you know, like you could have yeah. not you, but. And, and, and it could have been, and it that was the, the, the pitch could have been different. And, and that's what the idea was. And at the end it was meant to like, okay, well now imagine somebody's looking for a house to break into and their headlights roll across their lawn and they see the shield that we put on your front lawn. What do you think that criminal is going to do? Right. <laughs> like there, there's, yeah, but it's so manipulative and like it, it didn't align with who I am and it wasn't the change I wanted to see in the world. Now, yeah. I know that's a very millennialish thing to say, but if I'm working 70, 80 hours a week at something, I have to at least have some enthusiasm for it. Right. So how did your course come about? So the course came about because I kept running into similar people having the same issues. People who are afraid of sales because they're introverts. Or I run into a lot of small business owners. People who started a business because they are great at what they do. The personality I think of, I don't know if you've ever read The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Oh, Gerber. yeah. It's one of my okay, favorites. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah from that book. That yeah. she is a phenomenal baker, but doesn't understand how to run a business. Mm -hmm. I run across those personalities specifically on LinkedIn, probably once or twice a day. Mm -hmm. They are phenomenal at copywriting. They're phenomenal at marketing. They're phenomenal at graphic design. Like the list goes on and on, but they don't know how to sell. And so they rely on pitch slapping everybody out in the market. Mm -hmm. They just send these cold messages. Um, burn a whole bunch of bridges and hope they could walk across one someday. True. Yeah, I get a lot. <laughs> I get a lot in my inbox. But but so many of them, they've gotten so good at what they do because they're introverts, because they're willing to dive deep and become experts on a topic. Yeah. But they don't know how to sell. And when mm -hmm. you talk about sales, they have that, you know, Alec Baldwin picture in their head where you're being this bulldozer and okay do you want delivery on monday or tuesday mm -hmm. but that's not how you sell i've never for the last five years i haven't used a single closing technique at all mm -hmm. my close has always been is this something you want to move forward with or not yeah there's no trapping there's no manipulation because people can sense that and once they do it triggers during the protests in um, 2020, mm -hmm. I heard a policing term that's really resonated with me. It's called kettling. Have you heard of that before? Mm -mm. So in protest, what some police will do is they will start to close around the protest and start to form walls. And then they'll start moving inwards slower and slower and slower. And once the protesters realize this, it triggers that fear response. That triggers adrenaline, fight, flight, freeze. In 4% mm -hmm. of cases, people fight. So if there are 25 protesters, one of them is probably going to throw a punch. We're doing the same thing with all of these closing techniques. We're trying to kettle people in and trying to close those walls in a little bit more and more and more at a time. And they sense that. And that's when we start getting objections. Fight, flight, freeze, fight. They throw out objections. Uh, flight. They leave. They say, let me think about it. Or freeze. They just, um, I don't know what to do. Let me talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. But it happens because we're we're kettling them. We're, we're forcing pressure that doesn't need to be there. And so I'm sure that's something that you cover in your course. One, 100. Yeah. Uh, among many other things. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So where can people, if they're interested, because I think you just launched it, where, where should they go? So it's just brokensalespeople.com slash introvert. Um, you could see a breakdown of everything that's covered, goes into um, the history of introversion and extroversion, how to navigate the field, um, how to better understand yourself, understanding personalities that are involved, how to sell, how to manage introverts, how to create sales systems, it's like four hours of video content plus PDFs and things like that too. So that's, that's awesome. Well, I love that you're focusing on people that are introverts 
because I know, like I said, I, it would be like almost like a bad word. Like people, you know, especially when I was growing up, I would be like trying to overcome it all the time. And now I'm like, you know, as I built my recruiting firm and have to use sales all the time, like we're always selling, whether it's, you know, getting a, you know, a new recruiter on board or a new client or talking with a candidate about a position like there. And I know you can relate to this really. I mean, sales you're doing it all day long. You're influencing and you're listening to people and you're trying to find solutions, but it does sometimes get a, a bad word, a bad taste in people's mouths. And I know over the years, I've tried to use that as an advantage. Like I'm a good listener. I can hear what people are saying. I'm a, I have a lot of empathy. And so I think it's important for our listeners here to go, okay, you know what? It's not such a bad thing. And there's ways that I can, you know, really accentuate what I'm doing and so maybe, you know, if they are thinking about that, then they can check out, you know, your course and get better tools so that they can really, you know, thrive in a, an industry that's, that's always growing and is really in need of, of people. Every company out there needs sales. Even yeah. most nonprofits need sales because they still mm -hmm. need to bring money in. Um, it is the one job market where if you do your job, it's almost impossible to be laid off. Right. While a lot of people see it as very stressful, specifically if they work commission only, um, it can be one of the safest routes out there and the most secure, provided you're good at what you do. Right. Yeah. And organizations are always needing good salespeople. So mm -hmm. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Red. I appreciate you coming on. And I hope this was super helpful for our listeners. And I'll put all of your contact information in the show notes so people can find you and listen to your podcast because I know you've been doing it for a while. You have tons of content on there in your course. So Absolutely. And anything else? Um, obviously, reach out to me, brokensalespeople.com. Find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty, I'm bright orange. I'm not difficult to find. <laughs> yeah, you got it. And I'll put everything in the show notes too. So there's no way people cannot find you. So, yes. All right. Thanks, Red. And thanks awesome. for listening. This has been a blast. Um, love to do it again at some point. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Bye, everyone.